I'll be showing you guys how to flash an Apple Watch. Right now we can do anywhere from the first gen up to series 5 that you can use. Uh, similar procedure for the newer uh, models, so 6 and above, but they'll follow a different protocol or different hardware. So what we have for now, we'll be able to do uh, up to series 5, so as well as the SEs and SE second gens. So within that line, the 5, SE1, SE2, and so series 5 and under, and those two models. All right, so to get started with that, we'd want to go to the service port here in the back, right there, and you would want to open it up. So we'll do that here in a second. Alright, it's just held on by some double-sided tape in the back there. So we can set that aside and we'll put that back once we are done. Alright, so once you got that service port seen there, as you can see, depending on the model you have, they'll have different number of pins. So this one has six pins. And here's the device we're going to use. Go ahead and grab this guy. You can got your uh, cord here and connect it up to the laptop. And you would want to find the right size here for your watch. So when you put that in, the way to know that you got the right size is, let's see here. As you can see, the port here kind of lines up evenly in the center. So if you got the wrong size, this will be off. And, you know, some of the pins might be more to left or right. But as you can see right there, it's uh, much centered with this uh, plastic cutout here. So that's how you know you got the right uh, adapter here. And you will have a box of adapters with this device here. All right, so six pins over here. Don't mind this one, I had to uh, work on a little bit. Yours should be good. Um, if you have a series, I believe four or three and under, you'll be, I think three and under, you'll be using this center one here. And that's this most uh, furthest one away is for series six, um, where the pins are located is offset. Uh, so it'll be hard to connect it up. Technically you can still connect it up through there, but because the pins are offset more to the right and the angle that it goes in, uh, it's not gonna work too well. So we'll be using this for up front one, which would be for like series five. So anything with the six pin, series five, SEs, SE Sega gens. All right, and we'll just place that on. Now you'd want to put the watch into DFU mode. So to do that, you would want to hold the crown and the power for 10 seconds and then continue holding the crown. So we'll go ahead and do that. And when you put in DFU mode, you won't see anything on here. You'll have to go to the computer to see uh, what's going on there. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, now we have the watch in DFU mode. So let's go, and that's all we have to do over here. So once we put it in DFU mode, we have it set here and uh, it's connected to the computer. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you what to do from there. What we want to do is open up uh, three tools and you go to iDevice. And if you have it in DFU mode and connected up, you should see a screen like this. And it will tell you iDevice connected, DFU mode, and it'll tell you a little bit about the watch. Now you can tell it to exit, or you can manually do that by holding the crown and power until it uh, reboots. But next, we're going to go to Smart Flash here, and we can go with the Easy Flash. And then you would want to select Quick Flash right here. So as you can see, that's retain user data. We don't want that, we want quick flash. 
and under quick flash we would want to select the right watch that we have so over here it says we have the watch uh, 5.1 or you can look at the back of the housing to know what model you have if you put a different board into let's say let's say you put an se board into a series 5 housing uh, which we shouldn't do but if you do that you will see a difference here of that will tell you exactly what board is in uh, that it's connected up to so this one's 5.1 as you can see it automatically pulls up over here 5.1 so we would want to go select our local firmware we would want to import we're going to import um, it will be found on the NAS and it will be under uh, Apple Watch repairs and Apple Watch firmware. So here I have everything labeled out how it needs to be. So from the first gen, series ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, SEs, and SEs two for second gen. So we know we have the 5.1 or the uh, S540 millimeter. So we can go to S540. And I believe this should be a GPS model. So right here we have S5 40 millimeter GPS. And to confirm, you have watch 5.1 right there. It says 5 comma 1. So we know that's the exact model that we have with the, um, what the uh, tool, the software is picking up as. So we're going to select the correct one as 540 GPS and watch 5.1. We'll open that. And now it's imported. And what you will do next is click flash. And no need to do any of this stuff here. No need for backups or anything. So you'll just go flash. All right. And now it extracted all the firmware and it's putting it into recovery mode. I'll go ahead. So that view, normally you would see this right here. If you want to see the exact details of what's going on, you can switch your view and do this. So I'll see you back here as soon as the watch is finished doing it. All right, so at this point, we can see that it says, congratulations, clean flash completed. That means we had a successful uh, flashing of the firmware. And after this point, once this happens, um, you can pretty much disconnect it from the laptop. You won't have to wait for anything. And as you saw, it was still going and it'll continue doing the cleanup on the watch. And now we're booted into the watch here which means that we are now up to date completely with, well, up to date with the firmware that we put on it. So we put the firmware, and this is just a log if you want to see of uh, if an error occurred or something, you can see exactly what error or what happened. But since we were great there, that's good. So now we can go to the iDevice section here. And if you want, you can automatically pull the battery life percentage of the watch. Uh, we also have the iOS version here, which that we installed, which is 9.6.3, because that's currently what Apple signs. If Apple no longer signs this version, we will need to get the proper uh, firmware files and update that in our list of firmware on the NAS there. Um, and it will just give you some a little bit of information about it, like a serial number and all this sort of stuff here. So we can find more details here about the watch, but just a little bit more information on the watch if you needed it. And at this point we are done. So you can just uh, take it off here.
All right, now that we have that closed up there properly, you can proceed with testing the watch, connecting it to the phone without having to uh, update it from the phone. You'll just be able to connect to it and do everything you need to do to continue your repair.